Hey, it's Craig Syracuse and welcome to another episode of Walk in Faith, the show where we go beyond the image and we discover who our guests really are. You might know them from TV, the big screen, or even the world of sports, but do we really know who they are as a person? Do we know what motivates them? Do we know what inspires them? Well, that's what we're here to find out. On today's episode, we're visiting the Sight and Sound Theater in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for their newest production, Jesus, a musical that truly highlights the unique technology and staging that sets the theater apart. Stay tuned, walk with us. There's a point in the book of Matthew where Jesus is talking about stories and he says in seeing they don't see and in hearing they don't hear. And that is where the name Sight and Sound came from because it's all about seeing and hearing and using stories to bring messages of hope and grace. There are heroes in the pages of the Bible that we want to bring onto the stage and have people have an experience that deep in their life. Six hundred and some people from all different backgrounds and walks of life coming together with that united passion for this unique medium of live theater in a large scope. When you talk about the story of Noah or Moses or Samson, right away they think, how, do you, how are you going to do that? How are you going to part the sea? How are you going to have the temple come collapsing down? How are you going to do an ark on stage? How can we exceed those expectations? It's when story meets spectacle. That's really where sight and sound comes to life. Thank you, Katie. This has been what an experience from yesterday to today. I spent a lot of time doing research and really, and then I wasn't expecting the experience that I had last night. And I was saying earlier how, as a kid, I always came to Lancaster, I lived pretty close. And the first thing I thought of was Hershey Park, then it was Dutch Wonderland. And now it's, it's the sight and sound. Yeah. I mean, I need to hear, I need to hear the story. I, I, you know, met your grandfather real briefly, but tell me the story. How could somebody conceive this? Yeah. I, mean, this... I think we're as surprised as you are to end up where we, ha uh, where we are today. So yeah, my grandfather, Glenn Eshelman, he grew up as a dairy farmer, um, thought he was going to farm for his whole life. And through a series of unfortunate tragedies, he lost his mother at a young age. He was in his teens. Um, his father sold the family farm, and so at 18 years old, he found himself ready to be married without a vocation, not knowing what his future held. And he had always had um, an artistic bent. He always, he tells stories about getting up at four o'clock in the morning and milking the cows and counting them down one by one till he got to the end so he could run out and practice his painting and mm. different things. So he went and bought a camera to use as reference to take photography to then paint. So he would paint landscapes of Lancaster County farms and sell them to farmers um, and families just to, so they could have a, something to remember their farms by. And, um, throughout that time started just taking scenic photography, really fell in love with it. And his church one day, his pastor said, hey, would you mind, we have this event, would you mind doing a slideshow of the photography that you've taken um, for the congregation tonight? And mm -hmm. he said, okay, I guess so. And they were worried, my grandma said, she goes, slideshows were boring, we wanted to make it fun. <laughs> and so um, they put music to it, narrated it. And in the 60s, it was a really big deal. And so after doing it that one night, they started to get more and more requests to um, travel with these slideshows and started traveling. They were traveling all over the state into different churches and other ministries, schools, civic org organizations, and um, eventually got tired of traveling. They had two daughters at the time, and they said, you know, what if people, what if we could do something that people would come to us? And so they rented the Lancaster County Bible College Auditorium for one summer. They rented it for the whole summer and sold out. Wow. And that um, success allowed them um, enough financial security to be able to purchase land and actually build their own facility. And so they did that. We opened in 1976 wow. with a slideshow. Um, and throughout the years, just started adding different elements. So added animals, added actors. Um, we had dancing water fountains in that theater. It was a small theater, 600 seats. Um, and eventually, you know, demand for the shows outpaced the seating capacity of that location, and we built 
1991 opened what we, we called the Entertainment Center, which is a 1400 seat theater um, here on this site on this here property. in Lancaster on this property. Yeah. And um, it was in that window of time that we really started to discover um, you know what we were what we felt like we were called to do. We premiered Noah, our first full mm. length, all biblical, epic sized production. And um, it, we just it it shifted the whole of who we were. People were we were sold out for years, um, and we felt like we had just kind of found our niche. This is what we were gonna do. And then the unexpected happened. Mm. And in 1997, we had a tragic fire that destroyed the entire facility. And um, it was a tough time. You know, my grandparents, they were in their 50s. They weren't sure if they wanted to come back. Yeah. And they talk about often this moment, sitting at the kitchen table three days after the fire. And my grandpa looks at my grandma and he says, you know, do you want to come back? Like, we could retire. Do you really want to do this? It's a lot of work. <laughs> do we want to keep doing this? And she looks at him and she said, I don't know that I could live with myself if we didn't. This is not just what we do, it's what we're called to do. Like, this is our calling. Mm -hmm. And they made the decision that night to come back, and we opened 18 months later um, with the theater that's here in Lancaster, and um, have been here ever since, producing all Bible story, Bible-based stories, and bringing them to life in very large fashion. Well, and a lot of people, like you said, would have sort of questioned, like, <coughs> mm -hmm. is this a sign from God? You know, why did this happen? Maybe yeah. this, maybe we should do something else. A lot of people would have walked away. Yeah. I mean, to to go through such a sort of adversity. And then the one thing too is is you know this is a it's an Amish community, mm -hmm. to opening up you know sort of this this grand theater. Yeah. Like, was it accepted back then? I mean, do the people in the town sort of accept sort of this? this sort of, you know, this new age, new technology in, in a town that really sort yeah. of, Yeah, wasn't you know, known for entertainment was, exactly. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, throughout, you know, throughout the years, Lancaster has become known, Lancaster City especially, which is right down the road from us, has become known. It's a vibrant arts community. We are so grateful to be a part of it. But I think it was unexpected at the time. We were, we always said we were in the middle of this cornfield that, um, you know, if we were starting over, I don't know that we would have necessarily woken up one day and said, yes, Lancaster County is the place to build a theater. At the same time, um, it's home to us and there's no community we would rather be a part of and it has become just a part of the landscape of what Lancaster is. And in a lot of ways, you know, we often say Lancaster is so known for, um, you know, the to your point, the Amish and the, the heritage that's here, the old time way of being. Um, but we are also partnered in Lancaster with this, um, with the technology, this vibrant arts community. Uh, Rock Lit, it's up the road from us. We have a huge entertain growing entertainment sphere. And we love being able to do both of those things. It's what we do too. We have this, these timeless Bible stories that are you know, steeped in history and culture, and yet we get to tell them in a way that is using technology and um, cutting edge pieces of entertainment for the way we get to tell stories. So it's, it fits us very well, mm -hmm. and I think we fit it. So would you say the community was, did they accept sort of the, when the theater first opened, and especially now? Did yeah, because it didn't it? happen overnight. It was a slow growth, and it was already a tourism-focused county. And so for us to be able to bring even more people in, maybe some that are not as interested in the Amish, and a lot of times it was an awesome partnership for people to be able to come in and come see us and spend the weekend and see what else Lancaster has mm -hmm. to offer. We've, we're so abundantly grateful for all that Lancaster has. Oh, there's a lot to offer. I mean, yeah. like as a kid too, I remember just going on, was it Route 30? Mm -hmm. And just seeing how it's changed. Yeah. It's, it's this thing, Willow Valley, and it's changed so much, but it's sort of, it changed in a, in a good way. Yeah. Like it's, it's sort of like an adapt, but it, you adapt to it. But then even when you drive around and you go around Sight and Sound and you see the Amish, it, mm -hmm. you really, you see what the what true happiness is. Like yeah. it's not, you know, what, you know, what most people think it is. And even in Jesus, that's one of the stories he tells about yeah. the two sons. Right. And it sort of connects with the community as well. Yeah. It does. And we want, especially at Sight and Sound, we want to be able to create a restful entertainment experience. I mean, we have the opportunity to have space here. A lot of times, you know, we hear our guests say, like, it's a way for us to escape from the you know, crazy life mm -hmm. and we come up and it's restful and we get to experience these stories. And I think Lancaster as a whole offers that too. And now, how do you stay true to the Bible teachings and still appeal to a, an audience? Because mm -hmm. that's difficult. I mean, you use comedy in the show, but yeah. I mean, and even some of the some of the um, the dialogue mm -hmm. was sort of more of a modern day dialogue that you wouldn't see in the Bible. But how do you stay true to it? Yeah, I think for 
I'll speak for myself, one of the things that I most love about what we have the opportunity to do is take these Bible stories that have been around for thousands of years, you know, we can't take credit for them, we just get the opportunity to tell them. It's really great material we have to work with. Um, but we get to take these characters that I think we often put on these pedestals and we think that they were perfect mm -hmm. humans, that everything just worked out for them all the time. And we really get to show who they were and they were not perfect mm -hmm. and they had struggles and they had loss and they had brokenness in their lives. And then um, they got to know God, they got to know Jesus and that's when things started to change for them. And I think that no matter what backgrounds you come from, how familiar or not familiar you are with these stories, we can all relate to those. You know, we can relate to Moses saying, please don't choose me, I don't feel like I can do this. We can relate to Samson who messes up time and time again and God gives him a second chance. We can relate to the disciples who question, you know, is this really, is he really the son of God? Is this really who we're following? We can relate to all of those people and so, um, I think those people and their stories and their experiences are just as relevant today as what they ever have been. Maybe more so. <laughs> I know, it's like Jesus walked with sinners. So throughout the story, throughout yesterday's performance, there was a lot of miracles, there's mm -hmm. a lot of things, and I think all of the miracles sort yeah. of connect to someone in that audience, right? Yeah. Whether it's the, the story of the son, or if it's the betrayal, or you know, or if it's you know Mary. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many. What would you say some out of the some of the miracles that connect with you personally? For me personally, oh goodness. Um, I think for me personally, I love being able to see. Well, I'll say this. My favorite part in the show is when Jesus leaves the 99 mm -hmm. to go after the one. Um, I think oh, so many of us say that's our favorite show, but that or that scene, but that scene and that song and that moment where um, in the show his name is Dorian. Jesus he saw the masses and he saw the groups of people. He was with thousands of people all the time. But in the midst of that, he always took the time to stop and see the one person that was in front of him that needed touched. And he did whatever that person needed. You know, he wasn't just walking around doing these blanket things all of the time. He fulfilled the need of the person that was right there. And I think for me, especially watching rehearsals, watching this show really come alive on the stage, that's the scene that still, if I have a break and I have a minute to poke my head in the back of the theater and watch that scene, it's the one mm -hmm. that still grips me the most because it's what he did for me. It's what exactly. he did for every single one of us. And I that's can. what he did for everyone in the show, but it's so spoken in that moment. Yeah, I, I connected with that one as well. I, I kept taking notes and I told the woman, don't get offended, don't get upset if I take notes. She's like, I just seen the show <laughs> and I was saying everyone that I've met I mean so I walked around nobody knew who I was nothing of anybody but and I would talk to you know people during the show after mm -hmm. the show and everyone was nice right mm -hmm. there was such diversity and yeah. I've been to a million shows Broadway shows and Vegas and you don't see such diversity and everybody was happy everybody was nice from people that worked there yeah. to the people that enjoyed the show there's this sense of community and yeah. love and you feel Jesus in this in, in it. I mean it's not like it it's real yeah I mean it's hard to even explain to people until you come and experience it what it's like mm -hmm. I mean what, what's your experience like when you walk around and yeah. you talk to people I mean it's the same I love this thing that we get to do I just think it's um, it's what I wake up every day to do but I often say almost more than what we get to do, I love who we get to do it with. And I know I'm biased, but I think we have the greatest team of employees. We have 650 employees between our location here in Lancaster and Branson. And every single one of us you know, comes together passionate um, about what we get to do every day. And so working alongside people who are bringing each of the things that we bring. You know, I everyone needs to be very pleased that I'm not on stage and I'm not the one creating shows, but I get to do the thing I'm really good at doing and being able to look around and say, that person is awesome at doing that. You come do this thing with us and bring what you're created to do mm -hmm. and do it together with this awesome team is, um, it's a privilege and one that I definitely don't take for granted. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a passion. I mean, yeah. the people that work here, for the most part, are probably here because it's a vocation. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we're here to serve. They're mm -hmm. not here because of financial gain. Yeah. I mean, they're here for the community to make a difference and use their God-given gifts and yeah. talents to serve God. Yeah, absolutely. And we, I mean, we have such, a, you use the word diversity, but it's really true. Because we produce shows here in-house and because we have the animals and the vast um, breadth of our organization has a very diverse workforce. It's fun. You know, we always laugh. Um, we kind of crack up, actually. We have this, uh, what we call our manager-supervisor team that kind of comes together, and it's all of our leaders from all 
all of our different departments. And sitting in there, I always love looking around the room because you'll have your, um, you know, the leaders of the cast and crew that are dressed in black and ready mm -hmm. to be backstage, and you have the animal team leaders that have their cowboy hats on and cowboy boots on, and you have our business team leaders that are, you know, dressed very professionally and ready for the day, and our guest services team that are in their uniform for the day. And you kind of look around and you're like, where did we all come from? You know, like <laughs> what happened? How did we all get here? Um, but it is that diversity that I think is such a reflection just of the body of Christ, everyone that he created to do the part that they're meant to do, coming together and doing it with excellence. And we have a lot of fun in the process. What happens when you when somebody hears about you know sight and sound whether they're an actor or yeah. crew and they hear you're in Lancaster like yeah. that, I mean because it's you the first thing you don't, you don't think of is Lancaster Pennsylvania right it's, no of course not and we definitely. Um, yeah, we laugh a lot because I think one of our biggest challenges is being able to describe really what it is that we do. Because you say Bible stories on stage in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and it's like, really, what? <laughs> then you come and it's uh, its not just Bible stories, it's these epic Bible stories and a 300-foot wraparound stage and 2,000 seats. And, you know, you are really in the middle of the story. There's animals and actors running up and down the aisles and things flying over your head or angels flying over your head. Um, so it's not a just sit back and observe mm -hmm. experience. It's truly you're in the heart of it. And so whether we're talking about what we do on stage or what we get to do behind the scenes, it's not an easy thing to describe. I think that's why we say we're sight and sound. Come see it for yourself. It's oh, a lot easier than trying to describe it. I mean, it. there's, got, there's <laughs> got to be people out there that say, why would I go all the way to Pennsylvania and go to Manhattan? I mean, the technology that you use, or like you said earlier, the, the screen, mm -hmm. state-of-the-art screen. Yeah. If somebody's <coughs> questioning and saying, well, why would I travel to Lancaster when I live in Manhattan? What would yeah. you say to them? Well, we are definitely doing things that are at the front edge of the um, technology and the entertainment sphere. And we're so grateful. We want to do these stories justice. Like, we believe in the messages in them. And um, they're big stories. You don't just part the Red Sea easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for Jesus, one of the uh, new pieces of technology that we had the opportunity to partner with Tate Towers and Rock Lidditz, uh, in Rock Lidditz and Upstage to do was the LED screen that we use in Jesus. And it's 110 feet wide, 30 feet tall. Wow. And it is, as far as we know, the largest of its kind that's used in the theatrical sphere the way that we do. It's used like a backdrop. It flies in and out just like a backdrop wood and it really provides this incredible depth um, to our stage and it increases the ability to tell the stories that we tell in the way that we do and it's just um, the, it makes this show beautiful like that's the only word I know to describe this show is that it's beautiful because from start to finish you feel like you're in it and um, we had a team of people that went to Israel right before we kicked off producing this show they wanted to really um, experience it for themselves, walk where Jesus walked. And our executive producer, Josh, he came back from Israel and he said, you know, the biggest surprise that I had was how colorful it is. He said, I kind of always expect you talk about Israel and you know the time of Jesus and you think it was all dusty brown. He said there's definitely parts of it. There are desert places. But along the Sea of Galilee, he said it is so vibrant. These wow. bright grassy green hills with bright yellow flowers, mustard seeds right there. You know, Jesus used the things that were around him to speak. And so we were able to accomplish that vibrant color sunsets um, you know, grassy knolls uh, in a way that we couldn't have without that technology. So it's fun. Do you think it's important to use sort of the latest technology or to sort of tell, you know, Bible stories or glorify God and by using technology? Yeah. Is it important or do you think people would still come if it was just, you know, like a church play? Yeah. For us, it's important. We're a creative organization. We have a lot of um, inventive people, creative people that are always wanting to use that to be able, you know, creativity never stops. There's not a beginning and an end. It's something that continues on. And so for them to be able to um, say, okay, this is the next story we're going to tell on stage. Now, what do we get to do? What's the best way to tell the story? And we don't use technology just for technology's sake. We really want to enhance the storytelling. So we start there. When we're ready to produce a new show, we start with a story. We, uh, our story team, our writers and producers, they spend six months just in the scriptures, doing research, and narrowing down what parts of the story they want to tell. I mean, we could we could have produced a show on Jesus that was 18 hours long and still wouldn't <laughs> be able to include all of it. I mean, it's we have four whole books of the Bible to encompass. And um, so early on, in the especially production of Jesus, uh, what really came to the forefront was the whole idea of rescue. It's the greatest rescue story ever told. And so let's tell that part of this story. And so once we do that, then we say, okay, how are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. And so when technology serves that purpose, whether it's an LED screen or, you know, um, in Samson, we collapse the temples in the temple. You, the audience is sitting right in the middle of the temple when Samson pushes those pillars down and they completely collapse 
not on the audience, but almost on the audience. <laughs> um, so no matter what technology we use, it's really about supporting that story and not just using not just technology. Use yeah, not just to use it. That's not th that's not why we're after it. But we want to be able to tell the stories in um, in its truest form as the best that we can. Yeah, I think you, you definitely accomplished that. And during the story, and you know the Jesus story, I was so concerned. I was like, oh, they're going to show the crucifixion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you know, I mean, it's obviously it's it's the most important part of the story. But yeah. I was like, how are they going to show that? And mm -hmm. you and you, the way you showed it was just it was it was perfect yeah you know and Thank I you. always look at everyone's reaction and mm -hmm. I always look at people when they cry if they cry and I always say to myself why are they crying yeah you know everyone inter not interprets it but everyone has a different reason right why they're do connecting you think, differently yeah why yeah. do you think people cry when they see the crucifixion well why uh, do you cry I'm like, assuming do you do <laughs> most people do right I know I was so yeah. um, I mean what, what's the connection to you in this show I think um, Jesus is the main character but we really get to know who he is and who he was when he was here on earth as a person, as a human, by getting to know the people around him. Um, you know, having a main character that has no character flaws doesn't in, in and of itself make for a great story. Like, where's the conflict? And we recognize really early on that it's the people around him that really bring that story, that bring that conflict forward. And so being able to identify with those that were closest to him and seeing and experiencing the crucifixion from their perspective, um, I think is what makes it so relevant to us and to those that are in the audience. They're able to be you're not at that point in time you're not just watching the show you've been right there alongside of mary and peter and J james and john and nicodemus and mary magdalene all of these people who had a in-person face-to-face relationship with jesus and they're watching not just our savior <laughs> this man die but their friend their son their brother and um that's i think the emotion that you experience and you experience him um, you experience yourself as one of them because we all are, mm -hmm. you know, if we are followers of Jesus, we're one of them too. And so being able to experience it in that way makes it very personal. I agree. And, I w and we were saying earlier, how, you know, I went on the website and you've, you've, you've just about every date has been sold out. And the ticket prices are, they're so reasonable. You know, coming from New York and then walking around, I was looking at, you know, whether I bought a magnet and, and I bought a water. Yeah. The, and you see that this is really a devotion to your faith. It's not about making a profit, right? We all have to get paid. We understand that. But yeah. you can easily charge $5 for a water or $120 for tickets. Yeah. And still, you know, people wouldn't even really complain about that. But how do you manage or why do you do that? Like, why do you why do you charge such a reasonable price? And yeah. you know, what, is the, what is the motivation behind this? I mean, the motivation really is to allow opportunity for everyone to come experience these stories like to your point we're not in it for that that's not why we're here we're here so that people can experience these stories for themselves especially families you know we we produce these shows with families in mind the producer of Jesus he has four kids um, age you know ages 2 to 12 or 14 and um, he I think the opportunity to have meaningful entertainment that is um, faith-based and done with excellence, it's hard to find. Like we are grateful to live in the entertainment sphere and we want to be able to provide families with this opportunity to have these experiences and we want it to be accessible. So as much as we can, we keep it as accessible as what we can while still being able mm -hmm. to you know, cover costs and invest into the next shows and the future of what we, whatever the Lord has for us. And do you think shows like this have the ability to evangelize and inspire people? And have you witnessed anybody or seen any testimonials where someone says, you know, because of that show, I reconnected yeah. with my faith? Yeah, absolutely. We um, do what we call after show ministry at the end of every show where we have, give the opportunity for our employees to be available to pray for any of our guests that would like it. And um, I know I was just speaking with uh, someone else on my team a couple weeks ago and she said, you know, I was a little bit nervous about doing after show ministry and praying with strangers. And she said, but I went into it and I kind of recognize that I'm the one that's walking away with something. I'm mm -hmm. going into it to be able to connect with them and pray for them. And at the same time, she said, I'm walking away really blessed. And she, um, she was able to articulate, articulate it really well in the same way that Jesus saw the masses but went and had the opportunity to connect one-on-one -on -one with people. That's what we have the opportunity to do in that after show ministry opportunity. And um, we do, thankfully. Like We are so grateful to get reports of um, children coming forward, giving their lives to Christ, adults coming forward, either giving their lives to Christ or saying, you know, I, I used to walk with him and now I'm not quite sure, but this is inspiring me to go back and read the scriptures for myself. I want more information. And we often say like that's actually one of the best compliments we can ever hear is when a family comes or a person comes and experiences the show and says, it inspired me to go back and read the Bible for myself. Because it's not, sight and sound is not doing the work. It's the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that's doing the work. We just get to tell the stories. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this has been an amazing opportunity. Um, 
What's next for Sight and Sound? Like, what do you have coming up? I know you, yeah. you sort of alluded to it, but what's yeah. next? Um, yet to be determined, last year for the first time we took um, one of our shows into movie theaters with a Fathom event. We took Jonah into movie theaters and we're looking forward to doing another Fathom event this year, so stay tuned for more information. We'll have to come back and talk to you once we have all of those oh. details. Um, but uh, we have that, we have Jesus on stage in Lancaster, Samson on stage in Branson, Missouri, and uh, we're producing new shows. We'll be announcing probably the end of this year, beginning of next, with the next brand new show is for Sight and Sound, which will be premiering in 2020. Wow, thank you so yeah, much. This has welcome. been wonderful. It's thank been great. You. Thank you for thank having you so me. Much. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's our show. And thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we have an incredible episode when we go back to the Sight and Sound Theater and I sit down with CEO Matt Neff. So tune in, same time, same place, where we revisit the Sight and Sound Theater. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. And always remember, we have the ability to inspire and evangelize through our words and actions. Till next time, thanks for walking with us.